guys, I just started using the proposal tool in Pixify and I found that it actually works really well for scheduling marathon sessions or if you're a portrait photographer, mini sessions. So I think I'm just going to try to walk you through on how to set up a proposal. So the first thing you want to do is to set up a proposal is to go to the products area. So you would go to templates, products, and then product types. And this area is actually pretty easy to set up. What I would probably suggest is maybe sitting down and creating a list of all the products that you offer and then going through and adding them all into Pixify under here. So once you kind of have an understanding of what products you want to offer, it's, it's really easy to add. You just press add product type right here. And then it's either a physical item or a service item and just the name of the item, okay? So once you have all your products set up, you can now go to set up your packages. And I would go to templates, packages. Okay, and you just add a package. All right, so I already have my packages set up, so I'm just gonna show you based on what I currently have. Okay, this is the package we're gonna be using right here. And obviously here's the image URL. Okay, once you have this packaging set up, now you can go ahead and now add on your products and your services. So for my session fee, I include a two hour shoot, makeup and hair, and then two outfit changes, okay? So you just add on the product by going add product, um, and say this is, I was just adding on hours of service for the first time. For instance, if you were doing mini sessions, you would say 30 minute mini session. Okay, uh, whatever the description of the mini session is, but just know that the description actually doesn't show up on your proposal landing pages. So, you know, it might not be necessary to kind of add that on. Okay, um, and then whatever the cost is for the client. So, for instance, you know, if your hours of service is $100 an hour, you can put that. Um, but, you know, I would just suggest to make it so that way it equals to the package amount. Now, the wholesale cost is really, really beneficial for things like that. It's a physical product, like a book or something like that. And so that way you can kind of calculate your profit at the bottom based on what you're spending on certain service items or certain product items, okay? So once you have your packages all set up, you can actually now go to your invoice terms. That's just under finance invoices. You just want to go to your payment terms. Okay. And you would just want to go ahead and add a payment term based off of um, however you like to collect your payments. Okay. So for my boudoir sessions, I like to collect a hundred dollar retainer up front and the remaining balance is due the month of the shoot. So once you have your set up, then you can actually now go to your contracts. And I'm not going to go too much into contract templates. You're welcome to check out the last video on how to send a contract via Pixify. It'll be a little bit more in depth about that. But I just want to show you some key factors in trying to set up your contract for the proposal itself. Okay, so what's important to know is these variables right here. Um, so you want to just add the variable invoice lined items because basically it's going to populate the package they choose and any add-ons they choose. And it took me quite a while to actually figure out how I wanted this to populate, so I thought I would just kind of go over it with you guys. Um, so the invoice grand total line item, basically it's gonna take the grand total from everything they add on, their package. So this is the amount minus the deposit, which was $100. Uh, so that way it's gonna calculate correctly, okay? All right, so once you have your contract all set up, now you are ready to go ahead and start putting together your proposal template. So I would go now to templates and go to proposal templates. So go to new proposal template. So I'm just gonna go over areas that are kind of important for you to kind of fill out. Uh, the proposal template name, obviously these options based on what you want to show up and what you don't want to show up. The image header, my image header, I think it's like 900 by 250 or something like that. So if you want to design your own image header, this is the header that actually shows up on the landing page and all other pages. So it's very important that you have this um, and have it represent your brand, I think. Um, you also want to set up a description. This is what shows up under the image header itself. Uh, so just based on, uh, I would say like a welcome message and just some detailed steps on how they can get through the proposal page. Now this is not going to make very much sense right now, but once you see kind of like what the client sees via their proposal, it's going to make a lot more sense on what you want to put in this area, okay? And I also put on and fill out the review page area, just an instruction on how you want them to fill out what information you want to fill out on the review page. And I'll show you that in a bit. Um, obviously if you have tax and then also what, how you want your items displayed on the contract. I put down that I wanted a package, na uh, package name with total price then other items below. Um, and then also it will show up, you know, how the cost of each item as well. And under show advanced options, I put down choose your time slot rather than packages because um, all the packages are the same. The only difference is the choose your time slot area, okay? So once you have your 
proposal template all set up, it's going to take you to this page right here, okay? And basically what you'll want to do is add on your packages and add on your add-ons so that way they show up correctly on your proposal. So remember when we set up the packages at the beginning of the video, this is where this comes in handy. So what you'll need to do is you press add package, okay? And the package that I was talking about was the grower session fee. That was the one that we were talking about at the beginning of the video. It automatically populated that package with the 325 price and the header image into my template. Okay, so now you see it here, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna click on this right now and you see that it comes up with the image. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just take off the image. I don't wanna show it on the landing page, but you're welcome to leave it there and then kind of preview it and see if you like it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go press edit package details and I'm just gonna take off this header image right here. So in this area, this is where you actually want to start putting your time slots. So for instance, let's just say you have a mini session on today's date, okay? This is what we wanna do. We're just gonna put today's date in, which is March 18th. And the first time slot's gonna be it's 10 a.m. time slot, okay? And you press save. So now you see now this changed from a boudoir session fee to March 18th, 10 a.m. time slot. Still the same patch pricing and this is shows you basically what was included in that packaging. So now that you have that set up, it's really easy now for me to go and press duplicate. It's going to duplicate that same packaging. Okay. But now I'm just going to go ahead and change this to a 1230 time slot. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating separate time slots so that way people can choose. After you have your time slots all set up, then you want to just go to add, um, add, add on. So let's say for instance, we just want to add on an accordion book, okay? And I'll just say, you know, four by four accordion book, okay? Uh, it's good to have a description because it does show up on the client description stuff. So you can put retail cost and then also what the wholesale cost is, okay? And then also the image URL. Now this is really, really good for add-on items because that way they have a good visual of what they're actually choosing. Um, and what's really great about this is that they can choose more than one. So for instance, like if you wanted to do like four by six print or something, uh, and the max they can or max prints they can order probably they're not going to order more than twenty, right? And the prints is going to cost them ten dollars, but it really only costs you two dollars or something like that. Um, a lot are they going to allow them to? purchase multiple ones, you can say yes. Is it taxable? Is it yes? Um, and then I like this because you can actually limit it to certain packages. Say for instance, if you did have two separate packages that have two separate pricing, based on what they're choosing as packages, you can actually limit it so that way it doesn't show up for both packages and confuses the client, which is really, really nice, okay? Okay, so other things you can add on here is like adding the contract that we discussed at the beginning of the video. Um, and then also adding on payment terms that we also discussed at the beginning of the video. Now here's the thing. I would be careful in trying to add these items because once you add them, I notice you can't delete them, which I think is a bug via Pix5. So if Tim is watching this video, if he can maybe add that so that way you can easily delete it and add on new payment terms or new contracts or something like that. Um, so if I were you, I would just keep it blank unless you are really for sure going to go with this contract and never change it. So once we have this all set up, we're good to go to kind of start sending out these proposals to your lead. Okay, so I already have a lead set up, right? So what's really important about this lead area is you want to make sure that you set the date based off of your mini session or your marathon. For me, my marathon, I have marathons on separate dates. I have one in May and I have one in June. So what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and just set their date for the marathon date that was in June because that one was the furthest away um, because once they become a client then I can go ahead and change that to whatever I need it to be uh, but for the invoice purposes it was just better for me to be able to set it up some farther in advance than say today or if you already have a specific date then it's gonna be easier for you because you can just set it to that date and that's, then that's fine okay all right so then once you have the lead already set up you can now go to the proposal tab Okay, and now you go ahead and press create new proposal. Okay, so this is where you would go ahead and grab that template that we just created, right? So it's going to go ahead and pre-populate everything and press save. Okay, and you can now go ahead and go in and view this proposal. Everything in this proposal is pretty much set up. The only thing that I don't have is the payment term. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that payment term that we set up at the beginning of the video, right? And if everything looks this looks good, then you can go ahead and now send it to the client. 
So you can either just email it straight to them using this area right here. What I usually like to do is I like to look at publish and view. Now just because you're pressing publish and view doesn't necessarily mean it's going to send it to the client. It's actually going to just give you a link that you could actually put into an email if you need to. Okay, so once you get the link, basically this is, and paste it into your email, the client clicks on the link. This is basically what the client sees when they come to your landing page for your proposal. So now remember when we were setting up our proposal and we were going through the description of the review page and I was telling you that's not gonna make any sense until you actually see what the client sees. So now I'm gonna explain to you, you know, where these items actually go on this landing page. So the image URL is right here, okay? And the description right, is, goes right here, okay? And then your title goes right here. So now it makes a little bit more sense about how things are laid out so that way you can basically write your description uh, appropriately, okay? So for your packages, this is where the packages get populated. Okay, now as you can see, we named our packages based on the time. So now we have all the time slots that are available here. And this is where when you customize that advanced option it becomes really helpful because it allows them to choose their time slot um, rather than choose a package, okay? So if, for instance, this client came to this landing page right now, they're gonna wanna choose this time slot. So now they chose that time slot, it's in their cart, okay? And now you they can choose any kind of add-on. So you can have as many add-ons as you want, um, but you know, this is the ones that are come standard in my package. So let's say, for instance, they really like this mini book, so they're gonna go ahead and choose that, okay? And for the mini book, it only comes with 14 images, so they really want to add on two extra images. Okay, now it goes to details page. Okay, now so it's going to calculate all that stuff up for them, the session fee and everything like that. Then after that, I'll press um, continue to review. Okay, so going back to the review description, okay. So right here is where this comes in right here. And I'll show you the reason why I have that in there. Because when they get to this page, this is when they're wanted, they'll be able to fill out all information that you are currently missing. But as you can see, you know, there's a lot of information and it might get people confused. So one of the things I hope Pixify is going to do is be able to let us toggle whether the client can view this or cannot view this. Hopefully, Jim, if you're watching this video, you can incorporate that, okay? Um, but what I tell them is that this is the information that I need and this is all you need to fill out. So you can fill out this area then you just press save. Now it says information saved and now they can continue to sign the contract, okay? So you go straight to contract and then it populates their contract here, okay? So now it says this is the client, this is all the information they just filled out, which is pre-populated into that. Okay, this is today's date and here is all the packaging information, okay? Uh, it's really important that you name your title whatever the session day and time is going to be because it automatically populates it into the contract here and tells them what they're getting, what they added on, and so forth, okay? So this is the total session cost. Um, the retainer is $100 a day. This is their remaining balance. They have to initial, and then they can sign, okay? And it goes sign contract. Okay, now it's gonna take them straight to the payment page where they can pay that $100 retainer. They will fill all this out, pre out press continue, and I'll take them straight to PayPal to pay their retainer, okay? So once you get all this information, it automatically will convert the lead to a client. You'll get an email in your inbox just showing that they signed the contract and paid the retainer. I do notice that there are certain little kinks that need to be worked out still. One thing is that I wish there was a back button, you know, so that way they can actually go back and review certain things if they wanted to. The other thing is that I do notice that once they hit this contract, even if they don't sign the contract, it will still convert the lead over to a client. Um, so, so say for instance, this person really wanted to take their time and they went through and did the add on the details and everything like that. And they went to the contract and they weren't ready to sign the contract. Well, every single time they view that contract, it's going to create a separate client for them. And so I would have duplicate clients. The other thing is once they choose a time slot, it doesn't automatically delete the time slot from the packaging area. So you have to be really aware of that and have to go in manually to delete any time slots that people have already taken up. So just a couple things to know about proposals. Okay. Um, but otherwise, hopefully that kind of really opened up how to use proposals uh, via Pixify and in your business. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to keep more tips and tricks. 
and I will talk to you next time. Bye.